the series function. In this session, we will look at using a series function in order to generate a list of values or points. Replication is a very powerful tool in GC. We create replication in the model by using list. And a list that is only a few values is easy enough to type in. But what if you needed a list that had 100 values? That might get tedious. Or what if you wanted to control the increment and be able to change it? The series function is a method of generating a list of values by defining a start value, a limit, and an increment. There are actually many functions built into GC. A series is one of the most used functions. Functions use parentheses to define their inputs. So a series function is written like this. Series, parentheses, and then a start value, comma, a limit value, comma, and the increment value, and a close parentheses. For example, we might write series, parentheses, 0, which would be the start value, 21, which would be the limit, and 3, which would be the increment. That would give us a list of values, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. 0 being the start value, 21 being the end value or the limit, and they're incremented at a value of 3. There are several variations on the series function. The first is a series uniformly. This also returns a list of numbers from a start value, a limit, and an interval. However, the increment is adjusted to fit a whole number of points between the start and the limit. So a series uniformly function is written like this. For example, you might have a series uniformly of 0, 21, 4. 0 is the start point, 21 is our limit, and 4 is the increment that we want to use. Of course, 4 doesn't go into 21 evenly. So it returns a value or a list of values 0, 4.2, 8.4, 12.6, 16.8, 21. So note that the increment was adjusted to 4.2 in order to reach the limit. If that had been written simply as a series, the return would have been 0, 4, 8, 12, 14, 16, 20, maintaining the increment value given but not reaching the limit. The second is a series by count. This returns a list of numbers from a start value, a limit, and a count. The interval is calculated by dividing the difference between the start and the limit by the count. So the result is still a list of equally spaced points, but you control the number of points. So the series by count function is written like this. So for example, we might have series by count 0, 21, 8, that would return a list of 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Note that there are 8 values in the list. That is the count. So this might be used when you want a number of equally spaced bays. So a series can be used to create geometry at equally spaced intervals but it could also be used to divide geometry into intervals with the use of the t-value and parameter space. If we use a series 0, 1, point 0.1 as the t-value for points along a curve, then the start would be 0 or the start point of the line when the t-value is 0. The limit is 1, which is the other end point of the line. And the interval is 0.1, which would divide the line into 10 equal spaces. If we were to change the length of the line, we still have 10 equal spaces between the points. If we were to change the interval to 0.2, then we have 5 equal spaces between points. 
We could do the same on a curve, keeping in mind what we learned about t-values on curves. Their space is affected by the tightness of the curve. Remember, if this was the basis for faceting panels on the curves, you would want smaller panels or facets where the curve was tighter and larger panels or facets where the curve was less tight. Again, if we move the curve, the points redistribute along the curve, but we still have 10 spaces. If we change the interval to 0 0.05, then we have 20 spaces. We could do the same on a surface, keeping in mind what we learned about t-values on curves. The same is true for curved surfaces. On surfaces, you will use the technique by UV parameters on surface. Define the U-value and the V-value with a series. This will result in a grid of points. Remember, when defining a t-value with a series, the start is 0, the limit is 1, and the interval determines how many spaces the object will be divided into. So when we use point 1, we will get 10 spaces or a 10 by 10 grid of points. If we change the interval to point 2, then we will have a 5 by 5 grid of points.